What I want to stress here is that with Virtual Sun, we're blazing the path for a new management model. I already mentioned a few things about the architecture. We have a distributed architecture. We collect data from everything, from host, devices, networking. We store them using a completely peer-to-peer -peer distributed management architecture on vSUN itself. Well, what the hell? It is a distributed Soros platform. So we have our own homegrown, essentially distributed database. We store all the data. We process them locally on every host. And we aggregate the analysis of that data. And we present the various views you're going to have through the UI, but also have APIs. Everything is API supported. And as we speak, our engineers are writing dev DevOps tools, including Power CLI, to expose all those things through Power CLI. Right? This, is, this is the way we're going. So since 6.1, we have this health checks. It's a, it's, a, it's a service that goes and checks your hardware configuration, the hardware, firmware versions, driver versions, all that nightmare that people have to deal with. And checks everything is OK. Even your <coughs> network configuration, everything is consistent. And if something's wrong, it guides you to go and fix them. In 6.2, we expanded that with capacity monitoring. Because you have all these now features, you have good visibility how, where your capacity is going. Even with duplication rate five, what types of you know, VMDKs use what space, what is used for swap, what is used for VMs, metadata, what is your overhead with the different techniques you use. And we have also performance monitoring that gives you different views of your, how your performance is doing. Everywhere from at the aggregate cluster level to have like a bird's eye view, okay, is everything going okay in my cluster? Down to how an individual device is used, whether there's any contention on your SSD, how your capacity tier device is doing, IOPS, latencies, queue depths, any metric you can imagine, right? So what I'm saying here is that it's not only the storage features that, that matter, right? Not the kind of things that Howard cares about only but it's also the operational model. How the users can really use effectively all those features without having to get into like the nightmares of configuring a hundred different knobs. Alex. So do you um, include any trending information in this, any like capacity planning information, or do you need to bolt on VR ops to achieve that? Just comparing to traditional storage, you would normally have some form. If you have vSend, that management package, if you have VR ops, you have it, right? Yep. So it's not like you charge for it. So we, are, we can also train some information. We can sustain some of that um, performance, real-time performance information in the new service management service that we have in place for right. up to a certain time. So you're touching on, on, on a very interesting ongoing conversation in VMR. So the way we put it together is, today is uh, you use the vSUN management uh, framework to deal with tactical performance and capacity information. <laughs> If you want more strategic, VR ops is the way to go. But we don't want to push our customers to go and invest in VR ops if they do not need all that fancy strategic kind of guidance. So we try to make be as self self sufficient as possible here. But how these things evolve, are evolve, will evolve over time is an ongoing conversation. So here's the deal. Um, obviously, we have a lot of stuff in technology, a lot of stuff in, in the data efficiencies, performance, and all that stuff. But the big point on vSAN is also this. The management, as Crystal said, is very important. It makes sure that not only we simplify the complexity on the implementation side of the world, but also eliminate humans. I'm all with you on that one. However many touches and clicks we have is a risk anytime you expose that. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff live and not to sort of uh, any sort of a uh, boasting kind of way, but hopefully it works because it's my infrastructure, nothing too fancy. Um, and the deal is we have these new data services uh, and these features. So for example, here is what the, uh, whoops. This client logged out. Happens to me all the time. So the point is, we, we're now delivering information that before you had to get it through, for example, um, the observer, right? real-time statistic and information directly in the UI within vSAN in several places, one of them being uh, the cluster overview, but also at the same time when it comes to adding it to the, uh, to the actual, uh, selecting the actual object. What else? Um, here we go. OK. So the vSphere web client, we know. <laughs> um, so here's uh, a couple of things. So I have a couple of clusters. And the point is that from a management perspective, 
there is a stretch cluster here, there's a regular flash cluster, and I'll show you metrics from different one of them. So the deal is, from a management perspective, you want to make it easier for, a, for an infrastructure, whoever's managing the system from a VCR admin perspective. Notice that here we can show you everything based on policies and things that are tracked all the time live, whether it's the hardware, the software, the physical devices, the cluster, the limits, the performance, every aspect of the system. And these are very lengthy sort of uh, uh, categories that check a lot of different things within those services. Here, you now have the ability to have and use the uh, virtual sign performance services, which is what Chris was mentioned before. And one of the cool and one point I want to make while you're moving into pages is that we we are moving in a direction where we are giving you an overview of your, and management of your infrastructure. Not only these groups are becoming you know are irrelevant. Even down the road, clusters are just an internal architectural aspect of your infrastructure. You, what you will be managing is your infrastructure, not individual clusters. So that is our direction. This is our, we're not quite there yet, right? Don't get me wrong. But over, over time, <coughs> we're moving into a way, into a model where it's your infrastructure you manage, not the details like clusters, hosts, or anything like that. And this is great. So the point is, like, obviously, this is my environment. And I don't want anything to be super perfect, because it's not perfect. So the point to point out here is this. So we have a service now that you can deliver in terms of real-time performance monitoring, which is stored on every host. That data is stored for up to 90 days. So you can go back in time and see what happened within the system. We store that now on vCenter. Instead of pushing it to vCenter and depending and adding more bloat to that system, we basically keep it here. And here, you also have the ability on how you want to protect that data on the same concept that we use for vCenter. So basically, there is an object created automatically, and it says, if my performance and analytics data is very, that important, what I, what I can do is add the same sort of policy and data service capabilities to that particular object at the same time as well. And you control it at that point, right? But whenever you kind of go into traverse into the different clusters, you're able to get that kind of that same information. Another big um, point here is the what we do in terms of the the health checks. The health checks are pretty crucial to the way we've done things because it's all about also being able to eliminate the amount of time a, an end user or an administrator is kind of looking around for things to find out what's wrong. So the point is that the system through the health check here. One of the biggest things is the fact that we can check whether or not your hardware, your specific hardware, what exactly are you using, what's wrong, what's not needed, and what's not there, will tell you. You have the wrong firmware, the wrong driver. You should have this one, this one, and this one. And by the way, I'm going to get killed here, but we're also working on a solution where at, from that point in time, you can say remediate. <coughs> we'll automatically do the, the entire click, uh, click you and store go. Your, the, the, the firmware down, down to SSD. All and the way. All the way, right? So we have, that's something in the, that's in, in the works and we're actually uh, dealing with that. So you can see, for example, controller, all, SSD, driver, this, firmware, yeah. you name it. Okay, so all you, the, you uh, gotta all work the with the main ESX guys to get that to be server firmware yes. too. Yes. Well, exactly. We, have the, the, we, have, we already have the infrastructure for that, which is bum. Right now it's expanding on some of those things and making it better. So obviously, look, the point here is that we check every aspect of the system automatically, and you can actually control how often this is checked. So you have the ability to say, check it every five minutes, 10 minutes, 60 minutes, whatnot, so you can have that data. Ah, very you're cutting too many corners in your, in your clusters. Which is <laughs> I, I left it like that, yeah. You should see mine. <laughs> see, um, in terms of capacity, this is big. So let's show you some numbers, and let's not make a big deal out of what you'll see probably in, in dedupe here, if it's just the right cluster. Um, because it's just, a, you know, I just put a VM in there, and basically I deploy 1,600 VMs in a four-node cluster, or an eight-node cluster, I think. So you so see, for example, oh, this is, this is not the deduplicate one. But basically, you can see all the different points, everything that's consuming capacity within the system in detail, in percentage, and how much exactly is being consumed. And you can look at it per object. You can look, also look at it per virtual machine, what's being uh, configured and whatnot. Obviously, if you look at the same sort of configuration in a, this is a, a stretch cluster. If you look at it in a, in a uh, old flash configuration, in this case, what happens is you'll see, for example, our deduplication and compression efficiencies, which is pretty nice. Uh, but the deal, obviously, is you know how that works. It's either deduplicable or compressed yeah. whenever possible. Here you see 11x, uh. but let's not make a big deal out of that, right? But it, it's pretty efficient, right? And that's basically the same type of workload in there about 1,600 times in that particular host. Another thing that I did here is that you don't see a lot of swap because I'm also using the, the sparse swap, so I thinned. And look how much is it using. You can barely almost see it whatever's there. 
and that the if dupin, it was not thin, it would be will be much, much bigger. Will be much bigger with that many VM. Yeah, without many VM, correct. And the dedupe and compression overhead include is the hash table. You can see here. And, yes, yes, it's listed here. Yeah, I like that you. Now here's that. here's another here's another. We have to be point. transparent. You need to understand because that's part of that's of that the same system. That kind of data is rarely transparent. So he, here's another point. We talk about stretch clusters, robo, and all this stuff. You guys know very well how difficult and challenging it is to deal with multi-cluster scenarios and how complex that becomes. When it comes to managing a vSAN cluster stretch, it looks exactly the same as if you deployed a robo, a two-node cluster, whatever it is. It's exactly managed, consumed, configured, entirely the same, with the exception of going through some of the things, obviously the requirements on the network side. So here I have a, a stretch cluster, um, and to be honest, you can see that it's no different from anything else that's there. One of the major changes that we made in, uh, now in the product is that I'm going to show you how you basically enable vSAN and kind of go through that process, which Chris has showed you that before. So when it comes to, I want to make this easy, I want to be able to deploy this, here are the options. It's just basically a couple of clicks. So if I want to enable vSAN, here's the human eliminating factor where we say, let me do automatic to claim the disk, so no one has to do that. But just for reason of details, let me just choose manual, show you. So I want to enable the duplication and all those data services and features, a lot of all those things you want. Let's say I want to enable a stretch, well, a stretch cluster. All the features are easily accessible here. The process to do that, for example, here, we validate that your network and the interface from end to end are properly configured. And if they're not, we'll call it out way before time, right? And then as you proceed through the process here, you'll be able to then to do the claiming. And this is what the claiming basically becomes. So we identify the types of disk, whether it's through a device type or a brand or model. And all you have to do, if you choose to be uh, that much in control, choose the different tiers that you may want to add and choose them as you need to. From there, next. What did I choose wrong here? It was the, the, wrong, the other way around, no? Uh, no. I'm going to use the SSD for cache. Now you've got compression turned on oh, and yeah, you're yeah. doing hybrid. Correct. I'm hybrid. So you can see, for example, the, uh, those data services uh, obviously are only available on no flash. So you've got that. Take check. that off here. And balance. Here we go. Now we're able to do this very nicely. Again, you don't have to do this, right? This is a matter of if you're going to, if you're going to enable that. Now, if I'm going to deploy a stretch cluster, look, look, at, look at this. Stretch cluster. I have two active sites. Now I'm going to deploy that the same way I would deploy vSAN. So basically by going and saying, okay, I have a preferred site, which is another logical concept, or I have a, a secondary site, deploy that. Where's the quorum? We identify the specific quorum that we want to use, which is in this case is the appliance that Chris has mentioned before. You, you, you choose it. That appliance itself has to be outfitted to support the, the objects we put on there. So obviously we have to split things away. So we, we uh, configure in terms of the, the capacity and the disk that it needs very quickly, and you're done. That's it. Now to get and, that, and that user interface, the same one we use for rack awareness. If you want to, to say what are my racks, it's the exact same concept, the same uh, workflow and UI and everything and API. But then when it comes to also the, the managing, because this is another deal, um, when you enable stretch cluster, whatever you enable new in the system, we have to obviously institute the health components of it. So we track it from within the system itself. So here, when the, self, self, uh, when the health services load, you'll see there's a cluster object. And every aspect of the cluster, whether it's the MTU size, whether it's the VM kernel interfaces, whether it's the right multicast IP address, whether all the different components of the system are automatically done and configured for you, right? And you can see here, stretch cluster section there, and it's totally different. Now, what happens when something goes wrong? So let's see what does happen when something goes wrong. So obviously- Let me, hold on, let me do a, a time check. We have like two minutes. And help. A couple more minutes. Couple more. And fine, we're good? So here what I'm gonna do for the last thing, I guess. I'm going to fail a note. No planning, nothing, just turn it off. Hopefully it works. Sure, joking, it works. Of course it will work. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously... Um, no maintenance mode, no No nothing. maintenance mode, anything. I just pull the plug, right? So obviously the way the stretch cluster works is that behind the, ba behind the back end, you configure HA to have 50% uh, allocated resources for each. You enable DRS so that it uses host and VM groups so that it keeps VM specifically on their individual sites so that we can control how things go back and forth whenever there's a failure. Here, obviously there's an equal number of VMs that have been split across. Uh, obviously in, uh, in, the, in the failure, we would expect that by the time the system goes down and it fails, the VMs will automatically be brought up again by, uh, by um, HA. 
in that particular case. Once the system comes back up again, then things fill, fill over back to the system. But the whole point is, from an operation perspective, there's nothing different. You are still doing the same stuff that you did in the past, whether you, you deal with vSphere 5.5 all the way to 6.2 now. Um, and it just kind of shows continuity in some of the things that vSun is actually catering to do, which is simplifying complexity, not only in the infrastructure side, but also in the management, which we put a lot of focus into how this works, right? Um, one other thing we added here, and this is obviously working already, because the VMs, you can see them here, they're disconnecting. Those are the ones, obviously, the VMs that get disconnected are the ones that are on that particular host. They'll come back up. We've also added something uh, in terms of proactive tests, which is very crucial to some of the things we do. Uh, one for Howard here. So obviously, we give you the ability to do burn-ins on the system before you deploy any VM. So we have the ability to that. Within the proactive test settings, you can test the system for different type of workloads. And basically, what's happening there is that at the kernel level, we're instantiating about 10 different VMDKs per host and testing a specific working set at that low level that you can actually automate from here, out of the box from, from within the system. Uh, no so VMs installed, no, no. No VMs installed. So basically, we're, we're, we're using our IO Blazer, which is a, a fling that we sort of launched a long time ago, which is a <laughs> uh, And it's basically the same thing. So within the system, we have these sort of uh, profiles that you can just very, very, very quickly check either 100% read cache, you want to do an off flash testing and hybrid, change the working set on how it is. <clears throat> and also, there's a concept of a real working set, something that's a real type of uh, uh, a real data like a, the way it behaves. So that way you can have an actual accurate test. So this is something you run like on day zero on before day zero, you start uh, deploying any of your workloads. So you have a, an, an idea how your system actually behaves with right. real data and real uh, workloads. Yeah. I think we need, we need think, to probably yeah. stop for any questions yeah. here. And then so yeah, I think uh, this is probably some of the most, uh, from a management perspective, some of the newer features of performance services, which are distributed across. Very important to understand how we manage that and we keep that up. The, uh, the ability of the, uh, the visibility of the data now has represented, as well as the, uh, how much more easy it is to deal with a, a stretch cluster scenario in this case. The VMs come up automatically, you don't have to worry about that. So obviously, it's a lot of improvement, not just on the technology side, as we kind of got into here, but also on the management and experience side as well. So from that, any, any questions? Any questions, guys? In before we wrap it up. Howard? Yeah. <laughs> you have hmm. Yeah, but they're all about futures and you guys don't like them. <laughs> Ask me one, I'll tell you. Uh, so, oh. Really? <laughs> you, got, you got like 30 seconds. So we were at Intel yesterday and they had this great devi device development kit for Linux that act made access to their NVMe SSD three times faster. Uh -huh. Of course, we can't use it with the SXI because you guys aren't Linux. Sure. When are you buying in? Uh, I'll let uh, him yeah. answer that. <laughs> <laughs> and the 30 seconds right. is up. <laughs> Actually, I think You're it's fair to say that we're working closely with yeah. uh, Intel yeah. to uh, adapt uh -huh. our storage stack. Now, that is with the same stack that uh, vSAN uses, but not only vSAN, right. to utilize this new generation of devices. Yeah. 